Sunday, September the 5th, 1948. A wet morning in Dublin. Early traffic and crowds seemed little out of the ordinary, but the trains were arriving. And as the day grew older, it was soon evident that this was to be a special occasion. And to judge by the crowds that were pouring out of Kingsbridge Station, the city was soon to be crowded. Color sellers were doing a roaring trade. The Nace Road presented a busy scene as cars sped towards the metropolis. In fact, before noon, it was clear that this was all Ireland hurling final day, and that meant crowds, and it also meant spectacle. Yes, they came from all over Ireland, but notably from Waterford, for this was their day. And Dublin's ever-enthusiastic sports followers turned out in style, with parades of enthusiasm very frequent. They came even from far off America to see the title game between Waterford and Dublin. Honadon the Sloyte, the Owain o Gakai Deneran, o Gokera Adon Daum, ma la unto kilta by Asia. A band of enthusiastic Irish Americans marched to the ground and were royally welcomed. Park was drunk. Every possible vantage point was taken up early in the day. But still, latecomers hustled to the historic arena, anxious to see not only the senior final, but the quest for minor honors by the stars of tomorrow from Waterford and from Kilkenny. brilliant team of the Munster Championship hurled with rare abandon. But Kilkenny, traditional artists of the command, fought back in thrilling style, and at the final whistle, Waterford had withheld the challenge by 3-8 to 4-2, just three points. But they had laid the foundation for their county's great day. And the first burst of Waterford enthusiasm soon followed. Gradually, the scene was being set. The teams came on the field. Dublin. Then Waterford. And so began that ever-inspiring march past of the Arcane Boys Band and the team. Waterford led by Jim Ware and Dublin by Frankie Cummins. President and Mrs. O'Kelly are greeted by many friends on the Hogan stand. His Grace, Most Reverend Dr. Canaan, Archbishop of Cashel and Embley, was escorted to the field by Mr. Dan O'Rourke, President of the GAA, and Mr. Pauly O'Keefe. The National Anthem. The throw-in and Dublin and Waterford had set out on their final quest for All-Ireland honor. The game was hardly on when Christy Moylan had put Waterford a point in front with a Baston sideline puck. 
Om man dacht het zo, wie gaat een je, er kip in de maat, de zwoe is ongeveer. Dublin returned to the attack, but without success. Hurling reached a terrific pace in these early stages, but Waterford soon made it clear that Dublin's much expected superiority in speed was not to be seen, and that in fact they were getting to the ball first. The Dublin defenders were getting things hard, and Matthews, Dumphy and Company tried valiantly but vainly to keep John Keane, Ed Carew and Tom Curran at bay. The forwards that had won Munster honours were now on a scoring spree. The crowd shouted their enthusiasm, particularly the Waterford crowd. But on the field, just as in the crowd, the big people of the day were definitely Waterford. Dublin did attack, but weak shooting and the stout Waterford defence kept their total to two points. While Waterford had two goals and five points, an interval lead that was indeed merited. Yet, despite all this, there was life and there was hope in the Dublin camp. That race swung again and a high one went over the bar despite the appeals of goalkeeper Kevin Matthews. Port Larragut, at Martian Fein, the honest with Trouble, if we're in our fear. Half time, and while the teams made plans for the second half, the band entertained over 61,000 people. Dublin did show up better in the second half. Jim Ware was hard pressed more than once in the Waterford goal, but back came the Waterford men again. Matthews cleared to Walsh, who sent up the feed to Cantwell, who eventually sent the ball to Hassett, and in a twinkling of an eye, the Dublin forwards had the ball in the net. and John Keane laid the foundations for another Waterford goal. Quick Dublin scores raised the tempo. And more than one spectator felt the rising excitement. But with brilliant John Keane as an inspiration, Waterford replied to every Dublin score. Christy Moylan, Kevin O'Connor, Ned Daly of Waterford, and Tony Herbert of Dublin have a close part of play, but the clearance is returned. And as the visitors marveled at the speed of the game, the Waterford crowd, complete with their cheerleader, hailed yet another goal. Waterford 5-7, Dublin. 3-2. Back they sweep again. Daly, Curran and John Keane combine in adding another Waterford goal. The real flashes of fine Dublin hurt. Teddy Donnelly's solo run. that youth was not easily discouraged. 
and with Jim Kennedy their brightest star, another goal narrowed the unassailable gap. But Waterford replied in a flash, and as the full-time whistle sounded, Waterford had made history by winning their first All-Ireland senior hurling title. You're a hero, can I go get enough? The young kid, the crew of a mind, the sheen shot, went low, egg for and for Larrigan. The joyous Waterford followers are jubilant, and no wonder. Finn Baston, John Keane, Christy Moylan, Mick Hickey, names to go down in hurling history. Smiling Jim Ware is cheered and cheered through the Hogan stand. And amidst unequaled monster enthusiasm, he receives the cup from Mr. Dan O'Rourke. Chris Liam, the luck the point is, Claire Terrain. And so, as the crowd, partly jubilant, partly not so jubilant, as that crowd files away from Croke Park, we close yet another chapter in the glorious history of Hurley.